can't remember the last time I left the house. I do know I ran out of my medication a few days ago, but the apathy I was feeling just kept telling me to stay in, lock the door, and go back to bed. Not like I could afford it anyway, with no insurance to speak of and barely 10 bucks to my name. Hell, the last grocery delivery I got is barely hanging on, despite my depressed appetite forcing me to ration it. I had about 12 different voicemails from mom, asking why I wasn't responding, begging to know that I was still alive, but I just couldn't. It wasn't worth it because she wouldn't believe me anyway. Hell, I'm surprised she hasn't flown over here yet to drag me out. I can hear her now. You know you're better than this, Daisy. Get up. Yeah, great motivation there. It was the voice in my head telling me that I was worthless, that it would be better for me, for everyone, if I just took myself out of the pool. Not like I contributed much, just a struggling writer who posts horror stories on the internet. Not like it was enough to keep the lights on. Then again, I don't know if anyone would notice if I stopped paying rent in this shithole high-rise, other than the slumlord that already bled me dry like a damn vampire. He didn't even come around anymore, and knew that eviction wasn't worth the trouble. Cops didn't give a damn about things out here, and this guy was already on their shit list. Must not have paid his dues to the police union lately. Beep. Loud, discordant tones rang from my phone sitting on the charger beside my bed. I don't even know why I bothered to keep it charged other than doom-scrolling anyway. Not like anything was looking up in the world recently. Figured it was just another silver alert, some old dementia patient taking the keys when they shouldn't. My grandpa made it all the way to Mexico like that one time. Unlike his decaying brain, though, mine found the idea of being outside fucking terrifying. Just the slightest hint of stepping out of my apartment was dread-inducing with an insane amount of things that could go wrong at every moment. Hell, just going to the grocery store can get you shot these days. Why risk it? Not the point, Daisy. Check your damn phone. The sleep in my eyes wasn't leaving, taking every chance when I tried blinking it away, desperate to put me back under its dreamy spell. My hand darted out, limbs heavy, still not awake, and pulled my phone to my face. It wasn't even dark out, despite the blackout curtains making it look like the dead of night. No, the phone read 2.37 p.m. with the alert notification in full right below. Emergency nationwide alert. All persons do not, under any circumstance, look at the sky. Please close all windows, doors, and any other way to view the outside. Please shelter in place until the alert has been lifted. If you are not in an area to shelter in place, please carefully move to the nearest building with adequate shelter. Repeat, do not look at the sky under any circumstances. If you or someone near you has made this mistake, immediately administer the following emergency procedures. Restrain the exposed. Rigid, stronger bonds are recommended. Do not attempt to reason with the subject. They will tell you they are unaffected. Terminate the subject through dismemberment or immolation. Use both to be safe. Remain hidden until this alert is lifted. The hell's going on, I mumbled, still in my half-asleep state. I'm barely through the message when a call starts coming through from Mom. God, I don't want to speak to her, but with something like that coming through, I want to think it was a prank, so some joker hacking the system for some kicks like Max Headroom back in the day. I don't know, though, so I better at least set Mom at ease. Guess it's the best time to let her know I'm alive. Deep breath, Daisy answer the phone. I hit the green button with mom's voice coming in almost immediately, frantic, screaming. I can barely make out what she's saying. Daisy, oh God, Daisy, are you okay? Are you safe? Don't do it. Don't look out, please. She was tripping over words and sobs started coming between. You father. Oh God, your father. Mom, what the hell is happening? The sleep is shaking out with my fear spiking instead. She never sounded like this. Mom is always the tough, no-nonsense type, more likely to curse at a problem and beat it into the ground instead of walking away. I barely ever heard the woman cry, much less utter the word God without it being in Sunday school reverence. Where's Dad? What did he do? He was outside doing yard work. You know how your dad is. Next thing I know, he's bashing at the door, trying to get in. He's... he's changing. 
I swear his eyes are gone. He's practically foaming at the mouth, but it's like all his teeth are just growing or something. They keep getting longer in his mouth, sharper. I don't know what to do, Daisy. What do I do? He's trying to say something, but I can't understand the words. The words are coming out more forced now, sobs more pronounced and breaths cut short in fear. Whatever apathy I had about talking to her before was gone, now full of fear that this may be the last time I speak to her. Mom, you need to hide. Go in the bathroom. There's no windows or anything. Grab a phone charger, a knife, whatever you can. Don't. Look. Outside, do you understand? Jesus, is that me talking? I haven't had this kind of command in years, not since I burned out around my mid-twenties. Adrenaline is one hell of a drug. Mom, I need you to confirm. Do you understand me? Y yes she stuttered. Daisy, Winston was out there with him. He's gone. Shit, their dog. Stereotypical bulldog name aside, he was a good boy. Probably got spooked about what happened with Dad. No, can't talk to her about that right now. Gotta keep the confidence going or she'll break down completely. We'll find him later. He probably ran off. No, no, he's gone. Your father has him. He's, he's making something with the body, like a statue or something. She was muttering now. Mom, are you moving? Are you going to hide? I asked again, pressuring her to keep going. I need you to hide in the bathroom, the one connected to your room, okay? Lock every door on the way and keep yourself safe. Please, Mom. Glass shatters as she screams, a garbled sound coming from nearby. There's a brief thud as Mom drops the phone making it hit the hard wooden floors of their house. I can hear Dad's raspy voice speaking with something unintelligible through a warped mouth. He has me! Daisy! Daisy, please! Talk to him! Help! Her sobs were punctuated by scrapes along the floor with periodic thumps, shattered glass tinkling and crunching on the ground. No! No, Jeremy, please! I don't want to go out! Come and see... A hiss was barely audible over her screams, Dad's voice. I could recognize it anywhere, even through the strange noises he was making. Worship with us. No, no, please, stop. No, don't make me look. Mom's screaming please are cut short, complete silence on the other line now, before she was suddenly begins to whisper. Praise be. Mom, Mom, please, are you okay? I was screaming into the phone now, holding it to my face on speakerphone to try and get any attention possible. Instead, I only got silence, punctuated by the occasional scream in the distance. Nobody answered my cries. I finally hung up, knowing that nothing would come from staying on the line. My only thought was that at least I have peace of mind knowing my parents are already gone. It's not some mystery that I'll never know the answer to, so at least there's that, I guess. Now I know it's not a prank either. Something really fucked up is going on. Okay, be logical, Daisy. The alert said, don't look at the sky. Dad was outside when it happened, so that confirms something there. Restraining them makes sense now, but destroying them? Good God, that's, that's bad if the government is recommending it. Maybe there's something on the news. As soon as the thought crossed my mind, I found the remote, flipping it to the local news on my hijacked cable. The anchor man was sitting there, worry on his face as voices from behind the camera clamored in nervous agony. I get it. I got to hear my parents die. How many of these people have loved ones they have no idea about? How many were there out of some sense of duty, trying to keep anyone who watched safe? We have yet to know if anything can cure the result of what's happening. What we have heard from the CDC and WHO is that this is not an isolated event. This is happening worldwide, with the same symptoms presenting, regardless of nationality, race, sex. Nothing is discriminatory about this. If you look at the sky, you are dead, effective immediately. If someone you know looks at the sky, immediately seek safety and isolate them, restrain them if possible. This has a 100% infection rate and will not pick and choose who receives its horror. We hope to have a representative from the CDC on soon to speak. He was stammering, barely keeping it together. The phone ringing nearly made him jump from his chair. 
the sweat on his brow drenching his perfectly groomed hair. Yes, that seems to be them now. Professor Sigurd? Yes, yes, this is Professor Sigurd. Please, if you're listening, we beg you to not go outside. Don't look out of your windows. Don't do anything that could expose you to a clear view of the sky. Something is changing people. He was frantic, terror in his voice, but also menace. He knew something the rest of us didn't yet. Please, if someone you know is exposed, isolate and restrain them. They will try to expose you as well, in any way possible. Explains what Dad did, I guess. The professor kept going, though. The only thing that affected beings want to do is reinforce their numbers. They'll do it through any means, even working together. The only thing that we know is that they speak of worship for whatever they see. He continued on. I'm... I'm sorry, Professor. Can I ask a question? Anchorman asks, holding a hand up like he was commanding the caller to stop. What the hell is up there? As of now, we still do not know. We're attempting to see how we can view it without causing an infection. It's a drawn-out process of trial and error, he replies, shaking in his voice. It's currently unknown, though we have tried to see it through cameras and other means. Nothing, nothing comes up. It's like filming a clear sky. So recordings of the phenomena will not cause infection? Anchorman tries to clarify, a look of relief spreading across the nervous lines drawn taut on his face. We have only tried digital recordings, but yes, the infection will not take hold when viewed through recorded video. That said, we have yet to commence live viewing, only trying pre-recorded as of now. Please use discernment and do not try anything that could expose yourself or others. Still rambling on. He sounds more panicked than before, though. Something else creeping in. I want to stress, and I feel that I cannot do it enough, to stay hidden from any of these... Things. They are no longer your loved ones. They are no longer the people you know, worked with, or grew up with. They are monsters, plain and simple. I turned it off. Not like I had planned to go outside anytime soon anyway. So no worries about looking at the sky for me. Now just to lock the doors and wait for things to blow over. Mom's screams keep bursting through my mind though, making me jump as if she were right next to me shrieking for her life as dad drags her away. It all felt so real that I just had to try. Picking up my phone and letting out a deep sigh, I called her number. Ringing. The steady, consistent do-do-do-do sound as I waited for her was torture. I knew she wasn't going to pick up, so why the hell am I doing this? It's only going to go to voicemail. Then I have to hear her sounding happy. The screen changed, video popping up as she answered as a video call. The ceiling was visible only, their fans spinning lazily above, a spatter of red on one blade still dripping down steadily. I was holding my breath without realizing it, but whatever air was still in my lungs began hissing out slowly as I whispered, hoping against whatever terror was causing this. Mom? Mom, is that you? Come and see, Daisy. A whisper barely audible over the phone speaker. Suddenly the screen is hectic something picking up the phone and flailing around the room. Moments of chaos pass, finally settling on a face. What remains of a face, at least. It was definitely mom, or was it one time? But now the entire upper half of her face was... gone? Like physically, there was still the space, but the skin where her eyes and nose once were is just gouged out, scraped raw to expose the bone and muscle in her skin underneath. Her eyes were totally gone, nose cut off at the base, yet I still could feel her staring at me. Come and see, she whispered again. No, 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 no. This wasn't right. This wasn't my mother. This wasn't anything how she should be. There's no reason for any of this. Come and see, Daisy. Worship with us. The seal is broken. I didn't even realize I was practically smacking the shit out of my phone screen, shaking hands doing my best to hit the damn cancel button for the call. The red button finally connected, the disconnect tone hitting right as mom began to turn the phone screen away from herself. The open door flashing before me as it began to reveal the open sky. My eyes clenched shut as I tossed the phone away, praying for it to end. Why? Why did I try that? I should have known. I should have known it was going to be bad. 
Jesus, what's happening out there? I got my answer almost immediately, a loud explosion shaking the building, causing windows to rattle. Whatever exploded, it was close. Screams coming from outside that could be heard even up here on the 15th floor. Another loud boom shook me again, this time feeling even closer. Close enough that the window in my bedroom shattered, bringing the noise outside in, screams echoing from below. Good God, what is going on out there? I could hear nothing but screams and chaos coming from below. The Atlanta streets in a frenzy, violence ringing through the air, people begging for their lives, pleading for their loved ones, all punctuated by that same goddamn phrase. Come and see. As much as I don't want to, there might be something useful on TV, if it's still active. The screen came on, same channel as before, but the anchor man was now replaced by a woman, a small Chiron at the bottom of the screen, reading out a new message. Martial law. All emergency services are suspended. That was fast. It had only been a uh, 15 minutes? Honestly, time is a foreign concept right now. I threw my phone somewhere under the couch while I was trying to get away from mom, so no telling what it was. The television didn't have the time either, just more warnings coming across the screen. Those same instructions to dismember or kill anyone affected by the thing in the sky. We, uh, we're going to go live to Devon outside. The new woman on TV was stammering out, looking around nervously like she had no idea what to do. He's volunteered. Volunteered, yeah, that's it. He's volunteered to go outside and film the sky for us live to see what's up there. One second, we'll switch to his feed. The screen cut out to the anchor man from before, now screaming and red-faced as others were dragging him somewhere. He was fighting back, but it was basically useless against the number of people around him. Whoever was recording was following right alongside, saying nothing while some fucked-up snuff film was about to go down. The pale fluorescence around them made the beige hallway seem like the most mundane corridor to hell there could be. Finally, they reached a heavy metal door with the group setting Devin down and pushing his back against it. The camera was shoved into his hands, changing POV to show the scared man who was previously recording. Before Devin could beg for mercy, they pushed him backward through the door, the camera falling with a thud next to him on the ground. They slammed the door shut as Devin's sobbing, Bleeding face is captured for the world to see, still lying on the concrete. Please, please, I just want to go to my family. Please. He was choking out between pained breaths. Liza, please, please, be safe. Please, I'll be there soon. Didn't realize it until the screen began to blur, but I was crying now. Jesus, I felt empty for so long that I almost forgot what it was like. Between seeing my own family and hearing what's on the streets, can't say I didn't feel for the guy. Fucking hell on earth. But he probably has no idea where his family is. I was almost rooting for him like I was watching some underdog at the fucking Olympics when he left the camera behind, keeping his head down and running fast. There's a small car parallel parked right down the street. I'm guessing it's his, because he dug keys from his pocket before jumping in. Car starting with a jump before it was swarmed on all sides. People? No. The blood all over their faces said otherwise. Monsters. That bastard, a woman's voice cut in, feed switching back over to the studio news desk. The woman was beating her fist on the table, anger overflowing in her voice. Sorry, folks. Uh, technical difficulties. He, he, he. We'll be right back. The screen flashed out, instead taken over by the emergency alert message, same as before. The people down at the station must have lost the battle with their own sanity, turning on each other. Not surprising. It took me a few minutes of searching and grasping blindly under the couch. But I finally found my phone again. There was a missed call from Mom. I'm assuming just to try again for her original goal. But I'm... I know what she is now. I'm not risking that. Let's see if there's anything else out there, though. Twitter was a cesspool, as usual with plenty of conspiracies floating around. Reddit wasn't too much better, some claiming it was the end of the world, while others said it was some Russian attack. Meanwhile, everything around the world was going through this same nightmare. People turning into monsters outside our doors, but were arguing on the internet about who's behind it. Nobody even knew what the hell it was. 
all of this bitching and moaning, all of this blame being thrown around, and nobody can even know because just looking up is enough to turn you into one of those fucks. The worst part is that it doesn't show up in photographs or videos, not digital anyway. There was talk of trying analog recording methods, a lot of discussion about how digital can't capture it because of cybernetic cloaking or some shit like that. There's no telling what's truth and what's not at this point. The analog idea got me thinking, though. God, where's that damn thing at? I ran to the closet to throw open boxes, still packed from moving over two years ago, desperately searching. Finally, I found it. My old Polaroid that Dad got me for Christmas one year. This thing was vintage, and he found it in great condition. I double-checked it was good to go, grabbing a pack of photos for it and loading them in. Camera open, the daylight seeping in from cracks under the window. I tested it out. The shutter gave a mechanical hiss, bulb flashing bright against the relatively dark room, and a small picture zipped right out of the camera's front. All right, take it out. Flap it around for a second. And... Good. My tiny studio apartment was all there, caught on grainy film against the backdrop. In a world that wasn't ending, this would be the cover of a Midwest emo album. All right, Daisy, step up. Don't look up. Just put the camera through the window and press the shutter. Don't even think about it. Thinking about it was the only thing I could do. Okay, start slow instead. Two hands nervously reaching from this side of the curtains while turning my head as far around as I could, trying to hold the bulky camera steady enough to snap the picture. I didn't even know if I would get a picture. Angle it toward the ground now, okay, and click. I could hear the bulb hiss, that same shutter sound before I yanked it back in, looking with fear at the undeveloped photo jutting out from the slot. Pick it up, give it a wave. Color began to fade in slowly, revealing the lush greens and browns of trees below in the Atlanta fall. Around the street, though, was a bloodbath straight from a horror movie. These things were just grabbing people, horror on their faces as they were dragged from homes and businesses, all being forced to open their eyes, looking up at the bright, cloudless sky above. Even in the grainy photo, I could still catch the fear in those people's eyes, some seeing their final moments against their will. Others were right in the midst of their own agony, gouging their eyes out with fingers, scratching any semblance of sight from their face with whatever they could find. I dropped the photo upon noticing a child with what looked like a shard of broken mirror from a nearby car, readying it in front of his left eye for something I knew wasn't going to be good. Fucking hell. I don't want to do this, and I don't even want to try seeing what's in the sky. What if... what if I can do something good, though? Maybe contribute something good. Solve a part of this big fucked up mystery of a situation. I can try, right? Deep breaths, Daisy. Deep, deep breaths. Stick the camera through the curtains again. Keep it steady. There weren't any taller buildings than mine nearby. The city starting to level out into suburbs just outside my window. This is it. A clear shot of the sky beyond. But will it work? Will it turn me into... into one of them? Hell, I'm probably dead at this point, still too scared to leave my apartment at the end of the world, still worried about eviction or paying bills like there's going to be a tomorrow. My finger clicks the shutter, that same bulb flash and hiss as it imprinted outside onto the film. Deep, slow breaths, careful not to bump the photo as I bring it back in, making sure to keep looking away from the crack in the curtains. The world outside going straight to hell. I got it. I got the photo. Now, just to give it a little exposure so it develops, Jesus Christ, it, I see it. Clear as fucking day, I see it. It's showing up on the Polaroid, this fucking giant. It looked like a man up top, riding a horse like he was heading into battle. The horse was beyond dead, though, skin and nerves flayed, exposing the dark red, bloody muscle underneath. It was in motion as it was captured on the grimy photo, legs mid-pump, propelling itself toward Earth. No telling how big the damn thing was, but it was larger than the sun in the sky, threatening to blot it out at any moment as it cast a shadow over the world beyond. The rider was even more terrifying than the skinless horse, a charred, barely hanging on body with missing limbs. The foot was barely attached, jostling alongside the horse. Meanwhile, the face, the face had its eyes gouged out, much like those below. 
but it looked like his wounds were cauterized. Terrible burns marking the top of his visage as his jaw hung open, one side dangling down further in a lopsided grin. I wanted to throw up, wanted to scream and open the window wide to show myself it wasn't real. I could hear something nagging at the back of my mind the entire time. A guttural, whispered voice struggling to speak through a destroyed throat. Come and see. Everything else in my head was screaming, telling me not to listen to the damn thing. It sounds so welcoming, though. To look to the sky and let all my worries go. To see the giant figure on the red horse. No, can't let go now. I actually did something. I got some kind of answer, right? I did something good? Who the fuck am I even asking at this point other than the voices in my head? At least some are telling me to live. Better than most days. A scream pierced the air from outside, waking me out of the trance I had been in. Hand reached out to the curtain in front of me to pull it back. Fuck, no, can't do that. I pulled my hand back fast like touching a still hot pan on the stove, dropping the Polaroid in the process. From lower down, the scream quickly died out, joining the now steady whispers growing loud enough to hear even this high up, all beginning to sink in their strange beckoning. Come and see. They must have gone through most of the street-level buildings already, which means they'll probably move up here soon. I can at least get the picture on the internet. Maybe someone can do something with it. A tweet, a Reddit post, anything. Hell, I'll put up a TikTok if it gets the attention that could help someone. It only took moments after I snapped a picture of the Polaroid to post, and not long after that for comments to start flooding in. Stop spreading disinfo, F's cool pick. Artist name? Nice Photoshop jackass. But the world is ending. I told you all to repent. Standard run-of-the-mill bullshit. Of course, nobody would believe it. Why believe the batshit insanity happening right outside your window when you could make up conspiracies on the internet? Jesus Christ, I might jump off the roof before I even get a chance to look at the thing. The flood of notifications started to make me just want it all to end, knowing that there wasn't going to be any help for anyone in this shitstorm of death. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see, you've got to be fucking kidding me. As many Sunday school lessons and church sermons I've been dragged to in my life, all the southern evangelical hellfire that I've heard, there's no fucking way. It, it fit though. The four horsemen of the apocalypse? Except this is the second one? Jesus, what was the first? The pale horse, I think? No idea where he is, but the second was the red horse. The one that was always brought up in sermons about the end times. Endless war and bloodshed to really bring everything together. We really truly are fucked, I guess. A crash from below takes me out of my focus, remembering millions of Bible verses I had to study back in school, despite how bored I was. Hell, Revelations was one of the few that held my attention for longer than a second. The whole thing was like a metal album on the most hardcore hallucinogens possible. Seeing it firsthand is much more terrifying. It's the end of the world outside. A bloody horse and undead rider are hurtling through the sky, and I feel... whelmed. Maybe it's just the lack of meds in my brain deciding it's not the worst thing that could happen, but the end of the world feels like a damn relief. Or at least it did until the noises started going downstairs. Crashes at first, mixed in with some of the few sporadic screams left in the streets. Then it started getting even closer, though, working from the street through the thin walls of my building. Screams below my feet, outside my door. They were finally coming after us. My phone let out a loud siren again, another alert coming through during the chaos. I looked down, seeing if there was any message for safety, shelter, an answer to any of this. Come and see, that was it. The emergency alert was just the same goddamn thing. Everything is over. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm safe in here, I think. I don't want to risk opening my door because then they might come in here. No, stay here. Stay in safety. Don't look outside, Daisy. Come and see. A voice, but not from the streets below me or even outside my door. It sounded clear enough to be right in my ear, standing beside me, pushing me to go look. Why not, right? I had already seen the picture. Not like looking at the actual thing could break me much at this point, right? 
Number number, have to figure a way out. Don't think about looking at the damn thing. Just get out. Try to find shelter elsewhere. Basement. There's a basement level that has sewer access, I think. Can't see the sky if I'm underground. Can't get exposed by those things if there's nothing to make me look at. It's perfect. There's no rhyme or reason to it. My BPD brain just suddenly said, you can get out of here. And next thing I know, I'm just rolling with it. The energy is here, so I'm not letting go. I don't want to die as much as I'm okay with the world ending. A knife, a flashlight that barely works. Wasn't much to choose from in the sparse apartment. Have to give myself some credit. At least I wasn't a hoarder. It took all of five minutes to get ready, then one minute for all my hopes to get to the basement to fly right out the window. Noises grew louder, the screams advancing up the building, along with something new. The smell of smoke. Shit, 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 is all I can whisper shout to myself as things get worse. I brace myself, standing in front of the apartment door, eyes closed tight, praying to whatever God would send this hell to us, that they weren't going to be right outside just yet. Reach for the knob, get ready to turn, fling, and run. Jesus! The knob was hot and the fire already close outside. There might not be any way down. They're probably trying to flush us out. I grabbed a towel off the bathroom sink, wrapping it around the knob this time and pushing it open. Flames were already lighting up the dingy hallway, lights flickering out as fire tore through the electrical system. Whatever fire safety system they had in the building wasn't doing shit, an alarm ringing without any sort of sprinkler even attempting to help. Smoke was rising high, covering the ceiling before the flames could take it first. Only time was keeping it from burning. Change of plans, run the other way. The stairs are on the other end of the hall, with only hopes guiding me to see if they would still get me down to ground level. Bursting through the emergency door was like hitting a wall of heat fire already rising up from the ground floor under the winding stairs below. No way down, only up. Screams echo behind me from the hallway, creatures running through to pull out flaming bodies, tossing them from windows to see the sky outside. There's nothing that could get me back there. These damn things already swarming this floor in droves to take more for their own. No, this was, this was it. Face them or burn below. Neither are any kind of fun way out. Hell, both are going to be painful, and I would rather not do any form of pain. Come and see, come and see. One of the things was practically chanting with glee back in the hallway. Maybe it was better if I took myself out, not give them the chance to get a new recruit. The knife in my hand could probably get right through my neck easily. Maybe if I stab myself through the ear, it would keep me down. My only worry is that they'll get to me before I can actually die. No, the knife wouldn't work worth a damn. The only other option is up there. The stairs above me were clear of any flames, just smoke rising slowly to build up above. There was a roof access door up there. Usually it's where the teenagers would go to smoke without getting caught, but it would make a good place for a final bow. 26 floors, I'm on 15. Better start running. Except before I can get moving, one sees me. It screams, running for me in a frenzy while still repeating that same damn verse fragment. Come and see, come and see. It was in my head at this point, too, screaming on the outside and inside. There's no escaping it. As soon as it began after me, more joined, running from rooms in the opposite end of the hall, pouring toward me in a chorus of the damned. Down below, more ran up the stairs, flames covering their bodies like living funeral pyres all coming to attend my wake. No time to hesitate now, I guess. Stairs were taken two at a time for the next five floors at least, but that was about when I started feeling how out of shape I was. The adrenaline was going wild, but my lungs were burning. Floors above were no better than mine, with creatures already starting to flush through from the roof down. Wouldn't be surprised if there were people up there when everything went to shit, considering it was easier than smoking on the street for most people. Rising flames kept anyone from escaping, though, leaving them to either jump to their deaths or be forced to look outside by the demons. Air was getting scarce up here as the smoke continued rising, making me cough through labored breaths. Floor 22 now, screams echoing behind me as the same creature that saw me initially kept following. 
Maybe it's some sort of hive mind they have, because this thing was forming a whole group to run after me, just a couple of flights of stairs behind. Some of them were on fire, spreading the blaze around to others as they packed in tight on the narrow steps. They didn't stop, though, all frothing past each other to get at me. Keep climbing. Keep climbing. Keep climbing. Gritting my teeth and taking the deepest breaths I could finally got me to the roof access. A huge red door with an emergency light blaring above it. Loud buzzing from the fire alarm letting everyone know that the world was fucked. The damn thing was already swinging open and closed hard. Went outside fighting with hot flaming air inside to see who would win. Come and see, come and see. Worship with us for the time is near. So many voices down below on the stairs all screaming out in the same terrifying rumble, eyeless faces smiling up at me in bliss. They weren't afraid, weren't driven by any kind of hunger or goal. They were just happy. It's the same looks I would see on the adults during church services, those same smiles of being assured in their place in the world, even after they stepped out of that building and acted like a whole different person than they claimed. That same fake smile stayed, though making the damaged half of their face look even more terrifying in contrast. The chorus of hell continued as I ran out of time to open the door. They were almost upon me when I finally got up the nerve, walking close and closing my eyes before stepping out. I can visualize the entire roof in my mind after being up here so much. Straight ahead is the AC unit for the building. To my right is another, shorter building that could interrupt my fall. My left was the best destination. Over the side, right down onto the paved street below, still probably teeming with these terrors. I don't have a choice. The voices grew louder behind me, screaming, Come and see! So loud that it began to make my ear buzz with static, deafening in its power. Run! Run, Daisy! It's all I can do to keep moving, but I eventually hit the edge, barely stopping myself from falling right over. Stop for a moment. Make sure you do this right. Climb up, take a stand. Don't face the road, though. No, if I see what's below, it's going to make me stop. Don't stop. Can't stop. Have to end myself before they can end me. Feet on the concrete ledge, wind beginning to hit me hard, almost knocking me off balance and into the pavement below. I opened my eyes to see the creatures pouring out of the access door, running behind me. I stepped back, falling backward to face the sky above losing any stability and giving myself to gravity. Come and see, the voices rang out again. The sun was bright, but in the moment I fell, back to the ground with nothing but the high sky above me, their words echoed louder. Come and see, and I saw. Finally I saw, while a loud thunderous chorus all combined into one singular voice, ringing out once more. Come and see. I beheld a red horse galloping through the sky with immense speed. War sat upon him, a massive sword held in frail decaying hands slicing the air as more and more on earth cut each other down. Brother killing brother. My last sight before gravity turned me on my head was the horse, his eyes burning bright with the heat of the sun, pure hatred burning in its face. As my body turned, seeing the creature began to make me feel at peace. This was our fate. But was it a bad fate? The Messiah will be here soon, and the horseman is just bringing his good news. War will be a blight on the earth no more, with no humans left to foster aggression toward one another. Now we would all come together in worship, spreading the good news of what's to come by opening the eyes of others. My eyes are open now, though these eyes cannot yet comprehend the beauty of what I've seen. No, I'll need to open up my real eyes, the ones underneath these. Then. Then I'll be able to see the true beauty of what's to come, the true salvation all this bloodshed will bring, the coming of a new kingdom built on the bodies of the damned. The last fading thought that I have is the same phrase that brought me terror just moments before. My lips part, pushing words out in a whisper against wind trying to rip them through my throat. Three final words before the pavement meets my head, the old me's plan working perfectly as I hit skull first, spilling my brain over the concrete. My lips still manage to finish the final word, though, twitching as the rest of my body falls to the ground. Come and see.